Specific Types of Breast Cancer Ductal Carcinoma in Situ Ductal carcinoma in situ is a type of breast cancer characterized by dilated ducts that have layers of malignant cells without stromal invasion. Treatment consists of a lumpectomy with possible radiation therapy. The traditional method for classifying ductal carcinoma in situ lesions is primarily based on the growth pattern, architectural features of the tumor, and recognizes five major types. Comedotype the comedotype is characterized by a prominent necrosis in the center of the involved spaces. The necrotic material frequently becomes calcified. The calcifications may be detected mammographically, characteristically as linear, branching, casting calcifications. The tumor cells are large and show nucleopleomorphism. Mitotic activity may be prominent. The comedotype is more often associated with invasion and the degree of comedonecrosis in patients with ductal carcinoma in C2 appears to be a strong predictor for the risk of ipsilateral breast recurrence after treatment. Cribriform type. The cribriform type is characterized by the formation of back-to-back -back glands without intervening stroma. The cells comprising the subtype are typically small to medium-sized and have relatively uniform hyperchromatic nuclei. Mitoses are infrequent, and necrosis is limited to single cells or small cell clusters. Micropapillary type The micropapillary type features small tufts of cells that are oriented perpendicular to the basement membrane of the involved spaces and project into the lumina. The apical region of these small papillations is frequently broader than the base, imparting a club-shaped appearance. The micropapillae lack fibrovascular cores. The cells comprising this type of ductal carcinoma in C2 are usually small to medium in size, and the nuclei show diffuse hyperchromasia. Mitoses are infrequent. Papillary type. The papillary type shows intraluminal projections of tumor cells that, in contrast to the micropapillary variant, demonstrate fibrovascular cores and thereby constitute true papillations. A variant of papillary ductal carcinoma in situ, intracystic papillary carcinoma, is characterized by tumor cells that are primarily or exclusively present in a single cystically dilated space. Solid type. The solid type is not as well defined as the other subtypes. It features tumor cells that fill and distend the involved spaces and lack significant necrosis, fenestrations, or palpations. The tumor cells may be large, medium, or small. Clinical Presentation Ductal carcinoma in situ is typically asymptomatic but may present with nipple discharge or a palpable lump. Paget's disease of the nipple is an eczematoid lesion of the nipple, or areola, that is basically a ductal carcinoma in C2 that extends to lactiferous ducts and areolar skin. An underlying invasive ductal carcinoma is often present. Paget cells look like melanoma, large cells surrounded by a clear halo, and they invade intraepidermally. Lobular carcinoma in C2 Lobular carcinoma in C2 is a type of breast cancer characterized by malignant cells and lobules without stromal invasion. Lobular carcinoma in C2 differs from ductal carcinoma in C2 in many ways. Lobular carcinoma in C2 can be multifocal. Lobular carcinoma in C2 lesions are not calcified. Lobular carcinoma in C2 carries a lower risk of invasion than ductal carcinoma in C2, but an increased risk of contralateral malignancy. It's typically an incidental finding on biopsy because it is asymptomatic. Because lobular carcinoma in C2 does not progress to malignancy, but is a marker of increased risk of malignancy in both breasts, treatment of lobular carcinoma in C2 consists of close observation and the use of tamoxifen or raloxifen. Comparative features of ductal carcinoma in C2 and lobular carcinoma in C2. Presentation of ductal carcinoma in C2 is an incidental finding, mammographic abnormality, occasionally palpable, 
and tends to be unifocal, whereas the presentation of lobular carcinoma in C2 is an incidental finding and tends to be multifocal. Predominant location of ductal carcinoma in C2 is that it develops within ducts, whereas the predomination location of lobular carcinoma in C2 is lobules. Cell size of ductal carcinoma is medium or large, whereas the cell size of lobular carcinoma in C2 is small. The pattern of ductal carcinoma in C2 can exhibit patterns like comedo, cribriform, micropapillary, or solid growth, whereas the pattern of lobular carcinoma in C2 is usually solid. Calcifications may or may not be present in ductal carcinoma in C2, whereas calcifications in lobular carcinoma in C2 are typically absent. Risk of subsequent invasive cancer is higher in ductal carcinoma in C2 and lower in lobular carcinoma in C2. Location of subsequent invasive cancer is more likely to develop on the ipsilateral side in ductal carcinoma in C2, whereas in lobular carcinoma in C2, it can occur on the ipsilateral or contralateral side. Infiltrating Invasive Ductal Carcinoma Infiltrating Invasive Ductal Carcinoma is the most common type of breast cancer in 80% of cases and is the most commonly found mass in women over 50 years of age. This type of breast cancer is characterized by malignant cells in ducts with stromal invasion and microcalcifications, and it causes a fibrotic response in surrounding breast tissue. Infiltrating ductal carcinoma has the worst prognosis of any breast tumor as one-third of cases have HER2 new amplification. Clinical findings associated with infiltrating ductal carcinoma include firm palpable mass, skin dimpling, nipple retraction, nipple discharge, Infiltrating invasive lobular carcinoma is a type of breast cancer characterized by malignant cells in the breast lobules and less of a fibrous response than invasive ductal carcinoma. It is more frequently bilateral or multifocal than infiltrating ductal carcinoma, metastasizes slower, and has a greater association with hormone replacement therapy. Clinical findings associated with infiltrating lobular carcinoma include skin dimpling, nipple retraction, nipple discharge. However, these findings may be more subtle than in ductal carcinoma. These patients are less likely to have a distinct mass or lump in the breast than patients with ductal carcinoma. It is more frequently associated with vague swelling or indistinct areas that are firmer than the remainder of the breast. Other less common types. Medullary carcinoma. It is a type of breast cancer characterized by a well-circumscribed mass that exhibits rapid growth, but has a better prognosis than ductal carcinoma. The clinical presentation of medullary carcinoma is a soft, well-circumscribed mass. Mucinous carcinoma. It's a type of breast cancer that is more common in older women and is characterized by a well-circumscribed mass that exhibits slow growth and has a better prognosis than ductal carcinoma. The clinical presentation of mucinous carcinoma is a gelatinous, well-circumscribed mass. Tubular carcinoma. It's a type of breast cancer and is characterized by a slow-growing malignancy of well-formed tubular structures invading the stroma. It's more common among women in their late 40s. Tubular carcinoma of the breast has an excellent prognosis and it's rarely detected before mammography. Inflammatory carcinoma. Inflammatory carcinoma is a type of breast cancer that is a subtype of ductal carcinoma and is characterized by rapid progression and angioinvasive behavior. It has a poor prognosis. The clinical presentation of inflammatory carcinoma includes breast pain and tenderness, erythema, and warmth as tumor cells plug subdermal lymphatics. Pou du Hange. Orange peel look is classically associated with this tumor, although it may be present in patients with other tumor types. Breast lymphadenopathy. Treatment. Treatment of invasive carcinomas. 
everything mentioned except ductal carcinoma in C2 and lobular carcinoma in C2, includes the following options. Surgery, lumpectomy or mastectomy with sentinel node biopsy with or without axillary lymph node dissection. Radiation therapy, hormone therapy, that is tamoxifen, chemotherapy, Early focal cancers can be treated by lumpectomy with radiation therapy. For patients with multifocal lesions or prior breast radiation, a mastectomy should be performed, and if the tumor is greater than 5 cm, radiation therapy is performed. At the time of tumor resection, a sentinel node biopsy should be performed, and, if positive, an axillary lymph node dissection should be performed. All node-positive cancers, tumors greater than 1 cm, and tumors with aggressive histology should be treated with systemic therapy, hormone or chemotherapy. Hormone therapy for tumors with positive hormone receptors. Chemotherapy for node-positive or hormone receptor negative tumors. Trastuzumab for tumors with HER2 new receptors. Image-based discussion. Here is a spot compression view of a mammogram showing a high-density spiculated mass with heterogeneous linear calcifications in a ductal distribution. These casting calcifications are characteristic of high-grade ductal carcinoma in C2. Pathology revealed infiltrating duct cell carcinoma with ductal carcinoma in C2 comedotype. Here is a magnified cranial caudal mammogram showing linear branching calcifications in a segmental distribution. Grouped microcalcifications such as these are highly suggestive of carcinoma, and the linear branching is suggestive of a ductal lesion. Biopsy confirmed a high grade ductal carcinoma in C2. Magnification view. Panel A shows calcifications in the lateral aspect of the breast. The size, shape, and distribution of these calcifications are better seen on the magnification view. The pleomorphic appearance and segmental distribution of numerous calcifications oriented towards the nipple is a classic appearance of ductal carcinoma in C2. Breast MRI can be useful for determining disease extent and newly diagnosed cancer patients. These images show the MRI of a patient with a palpable retroareolar mass. Image A. T2 weighted imaging demonstrates an intermediate signal irregular mass just beneath the nipple, as well as a T2 hypointense area posteriorly. Image B. Post contrast T1 weighted sagittal image demonstrates a suspiciously enhancing lesion in the inferior subareolar breast, as well as an ill defined area of non mass enhancement posteriorly within the same ductal unit. Image C. Subtraction of pre- and post-contrast images confirm the two separate lesions with the posterior lesion being occult to both mammography and ultrasound. A biopsy of both areas was performed, revealing invasive ductal carcinoma anteriorly and ductal carcinoma in situ posteriorly. That's all for the video. We'll see you next time.